Good evening. Good evening. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We enter into a new season, a holy season. Uh, the season from the time of Lent on this Ash Wednesday. Uh, we gather uh, for 40 days. Uh, Jesus was in the wilderness, tempted uh, for 40 days. And uh, that period of time uh, prefigures our Lenten season, a time of uh, prayer, a time of uh, worship in God's house, hearing his word, uh, committing ourselves to our Lord, uh, rejoicing in his passion, his suffering, uh, his death, all that he has done for us. Uh, we uh, will be looking at the book of Leviticus this season of Lent and uh, seeing not only what God gives to his people in this book, but also how it uh, relates to us and uh, how it uh, connects to Jesus. Our opening hymn tonight, uh, hymn 418, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. O oh God, to deliver me. Be 
Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Purge me with this up, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with the willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, for I will give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. But the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. To do the design and the pleasure, build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, we join in our office hymn, Not All the Blood of Beasts. Uh, the psalmist spoke of uh, burnt offerings, uh, so too will our text tonight, and yet that's not what uh, truly forgives us. Hymn 431. Say to them, when any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, 
you shall bring your offering of livestock from the herd or from the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting, that he may be accepted before the Lord. He shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Then he shall kill the bull before the Lord. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall bring the blood and throw the blood against the sides of the altar, that is, at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Then he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces, and the sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire, and Aaron's sons the priest shall arrange the pieces, the head and the fat on the wood that is on the fire on the altar, but its entrails and its legs he shall wash with water, and the priest shall burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And from chapter 4. If the whole congregation of Israel sins unintentionally, and the thing is hidden from the eyes of the assembly, and they do any one of the things that the Lord's commandments ought not to be done, and they realize their guilt, when the sin which they have committed becomes known, the assembly shall offer a bull from the herd for a sin offering and bring it in front of the tent of meeting. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands on the head of the bull before the Lord, and the bull shall be killed before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall bring some of the blood of the bull into the tent of meeting. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord in front of the veil. And he shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar that is in the tent of meeting before the Lord, and the rest of the blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering that is at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And all its fat he shall take from it and burn on the altar. Thus shall he do with the bull. As he did with the bull of the sin offering, so shall he do with this. And the priest shall make atonement for them, and they shall be forgiven. And he shall carry the bull outside the camp and burn it up as he burned the first bull. It is the sin offering for the assembly. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And our epistle from the book of Hebrews. Uh, the author of Hebrews uh, loves to take the events of the Old Testament, especially the worship and sacrifices and holy things, and draw the connections for us to Jesus, who is for us the better sacrifice. For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come, instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered? since the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sin. But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings have, you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, 
these are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He does away with the first in order to establish the second. And by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel from St. Matthew in the sixth chapter. Jesus says, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. <laughs> o Lord, have mercy on us. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God.
Grace, mercy, peace, and forgiveness from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know which book of the Bible it is that Jewish children were first taught? Not Genesis, the beginning of the world, or the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Not Exodus, the great escape. Not any other book of the writings or the prophets, but this book, Leviticus. This is where the Jewish children used to start as they learned about God and his word. The children of Israel, they had just come out of the land of Egypt, 400 years of being slaves. Before that, it was just 70 people, a small tribe. Now they come out, a couple million people, free for the first time. And so God lays out for them what it means to be his people and the holy lives they are to live and the, the traditions and, and the way to worship and all these things. He gives them these holy gifts. We're going to, this season of Lent, work through the book of Leviticus. Not every verse, but, but key holy gifts things throughout this book and every week we will see not only a holy thing like tonight holy sacrifices but each week also how these holy things point to Jesus and, and the book of Hebrews every week will help us to see that as well tonight um, our outline is very simple um, first animal offerings and then the Jesus offering. The children of Israel have had a bit of experience with sacrifice because as they came out of Egypt, what did they do? They had to sacrifice a lamb and take the blood and paint it on the doorposts of the house. Well, now they have left Egypt, gone through the Red Sea. They are in the wilderness. And the first seven chapters of Leviticus are about offerings sacrifices, animals and grain being brought to the tabernacle and burned there and sometimes eaten. In our text tonight, um, of all the different kinds of offerings, we're going to focus on two, the burnt offering and the sin offering, the two that were mentioned in, in our psalm reading, Psalm 51. These offerings, they may seem strange to us, but for the children of Israel, they were at the heart of worship. When they came to the tabernacle, where did they come? They came to this big square altar covered with bronze. It was a big box with a grate over the top and fire inside and stuff burning on top of the grate. And chapter 1, where does God begin with these offerings? What kind of offerings? Burnt offerings. And, and what kind of offerings are they? They're offerings that are entirely burnt up. They're not eaten by the people. They're not eaten by the priests. They're just given to God. And they're not burnt in a really hot fire that just consumes them but they're burnt over a slower fire so that they would, would smolder and smoke and the aroma would go high to heaven. We talked a few weeks ago about Jacob's ladder when Jacob had his dream and he saw the ladder going to heaven and we said right there when Jacob woke up he said, this is the gate to heaven. This is where God is. Well, for the children of Israel, here, the tabernacle, here, this altar, it was the gate of heaven. It was where God came down to meet his people. 
And every morning and every evening, a bull would be sacrificed for the whole people of Israel. One bull, morning and night, day after day after day. And all day or all night, it would burn and smoke as an offering to God. But here in our text, God says, in addition to that one bull for all two million people, you, yes, you yourself can make your own offering to God. And as you do, you can know this. I will be with you. I will come to meet you in a favorable way. Yes, you, children of Israel, you who grumble. Where is the food? Manna? We're tired of manna. Quail? We're tired of quail. Water? We don't like this water. They grumbled and complained all the time. How should God meet them when he met them? He should have smote them. Should have come in anger. But God says, here, bring a burnt offering and I will come and meet you in favor. I will smile upon you. You can know this is my promise that as you come to meet me at the tent of meeting, I will come with grace. And so a person or a family could bring an offering. And after the main bowl was offered for the morning or the evening, then individual animals would be sacrificed. And, and, and the, the husband would, would be the one who would kill. And, and he, and together with the priest, would, would do all of the work of that sacrifice. And if you were a rich person and you wanted to bring a huge offering to God, it could be a bull. And... If that was too much or you didn't have a bull, you could bring a sheep or a goat. You could even bring a couple of turtle doves or a couple of pigeons. And that would be the offering. And no matter what it was, you would know that was God was coming in a favorable way towards you. And it is for atonement, our text says. That means forgiveness. That blood would be splashed on the altar. Now, as we think of it, it was a stinky, smelly mess. All that blood, all that hide and entrails and everything burning, you know, yuck. But it's what God accepted. It's what God asked. It was a holy thing, and it had God's promise. Here I will be favorable towards you. The, the father would take his hand as he brought the animal, he put his hand on the head as he brought it to the priest and said, hey, this is my offering. He would identify it as his own, claim it as what he is giving to God. The sacrifice would be made. That animal, the substitute, dying for the sins of the people. God loving and forgiving this family. The burnt offering. And then secondly in our text, there was the sin offering. And do you notice what the sin offering was for? Can you believe this? The sin offering was for not some horrible, awful sin in, in our minds. It was for unintentional sins. You didn't even know you did something wrong. And then you thought about it or reflected upon it. You said, oh, yes, that was wrong. It wasn't the stuff we do every day when we know we're doing wrong. No, this was the unintentional, unintended stuff. And God still required a sacrifice for that. If you were the priest, it was a bull. Or the words of our text, if it was the whole congregation, again, a bull. Or if it was a family or an individual, smaller offerings, sin offerings for unintentional sins. But this is true. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Unintentional or not, sin is sin. Sin wrecks our relationship with God. And so God lays out even offerings for unintentional sins that the people might realize how awful even those sins were. They cost that animal its life. Blood is shed 
for sin. All kinds of animal offerings. And you read through the first uh, seven chapters of Leviticus, you'll see that in our daily word. In a couple weeks, we'll be doing that. We'll be reading through this. But we're here tonight not just to talk about those offerings, because as we read in Hebrews, yes, those offerings were made and commanded by God, but guess what? Verse 4 of Hebrews, it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. It wasn't that bull or that goat that forgave any sin. They were simply pointing forward to a new sacrifice, to the Jesus offering that was yet to come. Those sacrifices, those bulls were offered day after day, morning and night. Sin was continual. Animals being burned up all the time. But none of them, and not all of them together, paid for the sins of the people. There was only one. One sacrifice that did that, that could do that. The sacrifice of the Lamb of God. The perfect Lamb of God. The Lamb without blemish or defect. Jesus himself. Fully perfect. Fully human. Fully God. Willingly dying, giving up his life. Christ does, in one death, what all those animals could not do. And so for us today, our worship is not built about around some big wooden box that's full of blood and flies and stink, not the crying of animals as they die. No, our worship is different. Our worship is focused here, a different altar. The altar of God, not an altar filled with the blood of animals, but an altar on which sets the blood and the body of Jesus. That one sacrifice has paid for all of our sins. We don't have to worry about those kind of offerings, about bringing animals and burning them up and all of that. You see, God delights in Jesus' offering. We heard on Sunday, Transfiguration, what did the Father say? This is my beloved Son. With Him I am well pleased. The Father loves the sacrifice of Jesus. Heaven comes down to earth. Yes, on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yes, at the temple. But most of all, to the cross. And through the cross, to all of us. And so God looks at us, not in anger, not in punishment, but he looks on us with acceptance, with love, with mercy, with grace. He says, you are my child. The perfect sacrifice has been made. Not your sacrifice, but the sacrifice of my son, Jesus, which pays for all your sins. Christ was offered a single time and paid for all our sins. Where there is forgiveness, there is no longer any need for animals to die. Jesus has died for us, and we have access. Because of the altar, we have access to our God. Instead of the, the smell of burning animals, our prayers rise to God. Our praises rise to God. They are acceptable to Him. Heaven is open to receive those prayers and praises. Thanks to Jesus, his word, his word proclaimed, his word with water, his word with bread and wine. And so we as his people in this season of Lent, we hear the words of Paul, who says not offer an animal, but St. Paul says, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Bring your gifts to my house. 
to support my house and its work. Bring your gifts to support and help the needy. Those are the sacrifices God desires. A pure and contrite heart. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Not all the blood of beasts could do that. But the blood of Jesus, his sacrifice. Jesus is your sin offering. The only one you need. He is the holy sacrifice, pleasing to God. And so God comes to you, not in anger, not in wrath, but he comes in forgiveness. He comes in delight. He comes as your father. He comes to claim you as his own, to love you, to keep you in his grace, in his forgiveness. Until that day when the opening to heaven draws you home. Jesus, your offering for sin. And that, my friends, is the way that it is. In this Ash Wednesday in the year of our Lord, 2015, in Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We will in just a moment have the imposition of ashes for those who desire. It's an optional practice of the church. Um, the words that are spoken, um, dust you are and to dust you shall return, those are the words spoken to Adam and to Eve right after their sin, reminding them that, that they are sinners. Uh, but also the words of Jesus pointing uh, or the words of God pointing to Jesus, pointing to the cross, that though we are dust, though we are nothing, we have that sacrifice, we have Jesus. We'll be singing some hymns as we come forward. Uh, we won't be ushering, so um, after we've received imposition, um, then as congregation, just feel free to come forward um, as you desire to receive imposition and also to join in uh, the great uh, Lenten hymns.
dust of the earth, the ashes of the palms of, of last Palm Sunday, and yet waiting and knowing that the forgiveness of God is ours. So we bring now our offerings to the Lord, not of animals, but of the, the tithes and gifts that God has given to us. Uh, also, please sign the friendship register and the red folder in your pew.
full pardon and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you accepted the offerings of animals made to you throughout the Old Testament, but that you have given to us a new sacrifice, the sacrifice of your Son Jesus once for all, the sacrifice that truly pays for our sins. So enable us always to live in faith and in joy and in trust in this sacrifice and to offer our lives and bodies as living sacrifices to you and to those around us in need. Keep us in the true faith with our eyes fixed on Jesus until that day when you will call us home. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all.
special welcome to our guests this evening. Good to have you here. We invite uh, everyone uh, each week as we continue uh, to walk through the book of Leviticus, uh, to uh, hear the passion of our Lord and to see his great love.